Buonasera a tutti, sono Michele Vitali, responsabile commerciale di T-Experience, vi ringrazio di essere qui. E, um, a questo seminario parleremo di quelle che sono le novità fiscali che ci saranno nel mercato dell'ottica già da quest'anno e poi nel 2019. E, mi scuso, il mio collega appunto, Stefano non può essere presente qua, quindi adesso abbiamo fatto questo collegamento a distanza, quindi adesso parlerà Stefano di, di, questo, di questo nuove novità. Faccio una premessa, e, noi oggi appunto parliamo di questa importante tematica, il cappello di questo progetto che si chiama Academy. Scusami il vostro. Uh, so we're going to talk uh, about an important project for opticians and the main objective is to disseminate useful information to manage optician shops and particularly the focus will be on the activities to be implemented in order to make your shop as profitable as possible. So, Since the focus is to provide you what information to face all the changes in the market, today we're going to talk about these fiscal innovations in the optical market. And tomorrow, for those, for all those interested, we're going to talk about the activities to be implemented, to be a winner in the web, so web marketing basically which is fundamental to promote your optical store. So I'd like Stefano Versa to take the floor and to expand on these innovations. My name is Stefano, I apologize for not being here with you tonight. I am a fiscal accountant and I'm also the manager of the experience company. Today we're going to talk about the most important things. So the topics to be dealt with is 2018 and what is going to happen in 2019. Uh, the first topic will be the shoppers. The shoppers that will have to be sold, they will have to be charged. And the regulation says that in order to comply with fiscal, fiscal regulations, there is a legal requirement for uh, retailers to use biodegradable shoppers. And the most important thing will be that it is no longer possible to give away shoppers for free. So not only wares in general, and that means produce of fruit and vegetables, also not only perishable goods, but also all products that are sold in shoppers, plastic shoppers. According to the new law, if the retailer distributes its goods, well, biodegradable plastic shoppers, It is fundamental to indicate in the receipt the sale of this shopper. So you truly have to pay a lot of attention to that. You have to be sure that the receipt indicates the sale of the biodegradable shopper. The price is free, so the retailer can choose any price. And can also be sold, the shopper can also be sold at a cost lower uh, than the first cost. So that was the first topic I wanted to deal with. Um, another two important topics that I would like to dwell on a little bit more in detail is privacy and electronic billing. These two topics have something in shared data, uh, how data is handled and how data is transferred. So I don't want to be exhaustive because the topic is extremely wide ranging. Let's start to talk about privacy first. On May 25th, uh, 2018, 
there will be a legal requirement to comply with the Privacy Act. Uh, that has been implemented on the basis of a European regulation. These European regulations are automatically implemented. So they are immediately adopted. So according to this regulation, it will become uh, a legal requirement, privacy, compliance with privacy will become legally required on May 25th, 2018. And there will be no postponements because this is not an Italian law. So it cannot be put off, it cannot be postponed at all because it is a European law. So Europe is not going to grant any postponements, any extensions. So this is a fixed date, a date on which the new uh, regulation will be implemented. So retailers will have to comply with that. And there will be uh, some uh, fines uh, uh, that will be given in the event of non-compliance. So basically what retailers will have to do is to protect data data that belongs to the single citizen, to the individual, to the person. So data will have to be protected. So according to the regulation, data have to be managed carefully. Data cannot be disclosed without the consent of the person in question and if If the data is lost by the uh, data handler, there will be a number of fines and a number of penalties uh, that will be applied. And in fact, the regulation introduces a number of principles, the principle of control of access to data. So it is important for you to know who can have access to data and the reason why data is access to, so uh, the retailer will have to protect the data stored in its servers, and on top of that there will have to be some automated procedure, monitoring procedures, and continuous analysis to verify that their own corporate structures uh, are capable of protecting personal data. And the European regulations enter into force in order to protect all data from any potential threats, existing and future threats, because obviously in today's day and age, we are moving into a non-material economic system. That is to say, you're no longer, there's no longer something that could be defined as, you know, person-to-person -person contact, but we're living in a virtual world. So if I uh, enter, if I can insert a data in a virtual world, I have to be 100% sure that the data I'm, uh, I'm storing is perfectly protected, completely safeguarded. So if a company, if an entity wants to collect information about its clients, about a person, should ensure uh, should provide a guarantee to this person that his data will be protected. And there are very hefty fines and penalties. So retailers will have to restructure and overhaul their IT systems. They will have to implement procedures. So if you don't have already proce uh, procedures in place, you will have to introduce them. You will have to define them because you will have to be able to demonstrate on May 25th, uh, 2018, that you have 
implemented to understand this procedure and to uh, create uh, the right procedures and strategies for your company in order to protect data. So according to the regulation, there will be a register of data handling. So uh, it is important that you are capable of notifying data breaches. What, uh, uh, what is a data breach? A data breach is an event in which data is lost. So if a store loses uh, uh, the data belonging to its clients, uh, to its partners, uh, uh, related to its employees, uh, in that case, uh, it is required to do two things. First of all, to notify the data breach uh, to the data protection officer and also notify the data breach to all of the people the data belonged to. So one of the most important things that uh, should be done is the fact that me, uh, as a company, I must know thoroughly which data I have and uh, to which people uh, this data belong. Otherwise, I will not be able to notify these people that their data got lost. Then, depending on the amount of data you will have to manage, uh, there will also be a professional called a data protection officer who assists the company in setting up its uh, privacy protection system, and that represents the company when it is required uh, to deal uh, with the uh, data authority in the event of a uh, litigation. And also another important principle is privacy by design, and that means that when I have to implement some IT mechanisms uh, or I have uh, to implement some corporate procedures, I will have to do that with a view uh, to implementing privacy. That is to say, privacy will become a controlled system of your own processes. Privacy by design means that privacy is not only a legal requirement, but becomes one of the tools that will allow me to manage as best as possible my internal processes for protecting data. So that was some sort of an introduction. In order to inform you that this is a mandatory legal requirement, especially if we check out the penalties and fines that may uh, be administered, up to 20 million euros, or 4% of annual sales up to a maximum of 20 million euros. And that applies uh, to people that do not comply with the legal requirement already on May 25th, or also for companies that have already complied with this legal requirement. So companies that have already complied with the legal requirement but then do not comply with the principles contained in their uh, privacy statement. So because of that, we need to uh, understand what are our daily activities and the impact of the new privacy law on our daily activities, on our day-to-day -day business. We have to understand where we enter sensitive data that belongs to our clients or our employees. So how we understand how to protect that data. Maybe appoint a data protection officer who's competent 
in the IT uh, area, in the legal area, in process analysis, uh, uh, who will carry out the task to help the company to adjust to the new legal regulation. And this professional can be either an external consultant or could even be uh, a person on the company's payroll provided that that person has no uh, personal interest in the privacy processes. Uh, an example, obviously the IT manager cannot be a data protection officer because there will be a conflict of interest because the IT systems are uh, maybe the most important area that is involved in the privacy regulation. So we will have to review all of the documents that we release to clients for privacy purposes and we will have to review the uh, procedures to gain access to data because uh, we need to know who can gain access to data and what that person can do with the data collected. Another important topic that has a, a, an even greater impact is electronic billing. As you can see, as you can see in these slides, it dates back to almost 10 years ago. 10 years ago, uh, at a European level, we were already talking about electronic billing. Uh, what is an electronic invoice? Basically, this is an electronic document that is produced in a very special format called XML that must comply with the uh, training technical standards so the word defined by SOJ. And since we're talking about an electronic document, it should ensure uh, integrity over time and the fact that it cannot be changed. So it is not a PDF document. A PDF document is a graphic representation of an invoice that is still a paper invoice. An electronic invoice is a series of instructions and descriptions that vertically develop, that do not develop horizontally, and uh, since an electronic invoice is directly created by an IT system, it, it, it becomes unchangeable. So an electronic invoice, in order to be valid, must be digitally signed. A digital signature is a, an instrument that has been used for over 15 years that is associated uh, with the applicant that is normally released by the Chambers of Commerce. And that digital signature simply says uh, that a document that is that uh, features of that seal, the document was signed by that, pe uh, by that person, the person who owns uh, that seal. So uh, we started talking about electronic invoices in 2008. In Italy, at the end of 2007, we had a financial law that called for the institution of uh, electronic billing. And it took as many as six years uh, in order to start the entire electronic billing process uh, for public administration. Uh, and the first electronic invoices were sent in June 2014 for simply for public institutions or public agencies, for instance, uh, uh, the tax um, system 
for uh, the social security system uh, that were required to receive invo electronic invoices only. And then later on, even uh, public administration saw a requirement for uh, electronic uh, billing. So there's a list of public subjects that is uh, compiled by ISTAT every year, and subjects belonging to that uh, list were legally required to receive uh, electronic invoices. And still, within the public administration system, uh, gradually uh, the public uh, was expanding to receive uh, electronic billing. And today we can say that all subjects pertaining to the public administration, also the companies that have shares in public administration institutions, all of these subjects today must receive electronic invoices. However, in Italy, uh, things are changing, and Italy is trying to define an invoicing uh, standard. So uh, it seems that in the future, electronic billing will become a mandatory requirement for everybody. So in the B2B uh, industry, electronic billing is still on a voluntary basis. But then on January uh, 1st, 2019, it uh, seems that the standard will require electronic billing not only in B2B subjects, but also in the B2C area, so in business to consumer. So we're talking about January 1st, 2019, but this standard will uh, enter into force before on July 1st, 2018. And uh, so probably soon after the Italian elections. If a government is formed uh, that is different from the existing government politically, probably all of these requirements will be slightly postponed, but sooner or later, we will get to this mandatory requirement for electronic billing. Even because apart from, uh, from the fiscal requirement, uh, electronic billing is a very powerful tool and it's also very uh, economical. Because uh, some surveys uh, were carried out by the Italian Polytechnic University, by the Milan's Polytechnic University, have shown that electronic billing will generate a 12 billion euro savings thanks uh, to the more reduced use of paper and ink. And on top of that, it has been estimated that Today, a paper invoice may cost something like 25 euros, or, although this is a little bit expensive. But let's say the processing of a paper invoice, the way it is processed, the way it is registered by the supplier, and also the archiving of the paper invoice may cost 
23, between 23 and 27 euros. And this cost will become almost close to zero. It will cost probably between processing of electronic invoices will cost between two and four euros. So dematerialization of these processes will definitely generate savings. In addition to the fact that this fiscal requirement will become mandatory. Now let's take a step back. So January 1st, 2019, B2B electronic billing uh, will become effective, but two, two days regulations state that as of July 1st, 2018, as regards uh, fuel supplies, already electronic uh, invoices will have to be issued. And I'm wondering today, how many entrepreneurs, businesses, companies today still do not have electronic invoices and use uh, paper uh, forms? So as of July 1st, 2018, when uh, you get gas at the gas station, and if you want to deduct the costs of uh, fuel, you will necessarily have you will necessarily have to do two things. So first of all, you will have to receive an electronic invoice, and will have to pay for that fuel using a debit or a credit card. And today. This requirement will not be implemented on 1st January 2019, but it will become effective on July 1st of this year. So, by that date, you will have to learn how to deal with an electronic invoice. And let's not forget our Italian health card system. It has become mandatory in 2017. Fortunately, 2017 was a transition year uh, where all retailers and fiscal accountants uh, actually swore than uh, uh, call up names. But uh, in 2018, if you make any mistakes in the transmission, that will become uh, punishable by lage. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, as of January 1st, 2017, it was possible to start operating using electronic, uh, the electronic billing system. There was a legislative decree that was introduced in uh, 2017, and under that legislative decree, all of the outstanding invoices that had to be sent through SDLE and uh, the person receiving that had to register the electronic invoice and send it to the uh, revenue system. So everything was electronically transmitted and you had to keep a registry, electronic registry, of all income and expenditures. In that case, you could have you could have some sort of a beneficial regimen. So if you comply with all three conditions, you will no longer have to present a registry of income and expenditure. You will no longer have to present uh, uh, certain decorations. 
the VAT reimbursement was accelerated, so the reimbursement could be received within three months, and also, if you pay in a way that can be tracked, then the tax revenue uh, office could monitor your activities only for the last two years. So that was a great uh, advantage. But obviously, you had to comply with uh, all of the uh, with all of the three conditions I have just mentioned. So let's talk again about electronic invoices. We mentioned before that uh, the person who issues up the invoice. We'll have to issue the invoice in the XML format. This file can be transmitted directly by the client, or it can be transmitted to a, uh, an in-between agent, could be a fiscal accountant or any other company dealing with these services, and it will be transmitted to this SLE. SLE, SDLI, is an interchange system that collects all of the electronic invoices that are issued by uh, retailers. This system is managed by Sojay and also by the Inland Revenues. And Inland Revenues, uh, when they see electronic invoices, uh, that go through the system, uh, the invoices are electronically managed. Otherwise, the company issuing the invoice is required to uh, retransmit the invoice to Asli. And the objective of this interchange system is to accelerate the times of assessment by the inland revenues. And you should consider that two days control structures is based on your uh, income uh, statements. So 2017 will be assessed based on the data that will be delivered in 2018. So if in 2017, if I had managed to uh, organize everything electronically, this data will get to the uh, inland revenues in 2017, and this will shorten by one year uh, all of the assessment procedures and phases. So an electronic invoice is generating and electronically transmitted to SLE, and the SLE system checks out that the invoice is correct. If the invoice is not in full technical compliance, uh, the invoice will be rejected. Whereas if the invoice is correct, this we will inform the client that the invoice is correct and will uh, convey to the client the addressee. And the addressee will communicate to Sleep to see uh, the fact that it has received uh, the invoice. And the addressee has 15 days to accept the invoice or reject it. And uh, it has to convey that information, acceptance or rejection to this date, and this date will reconvey this piece of information 
uh, to uh, the client. Whereas if the addressee doesn't do anything in 15 days, by default, the state will communicate to the client that the invoice has been accepted by the addressee. So, compared uh, to paper uh, invoices, electronic invoices, uh, are based on an IT system that can manage the contents of invoices. First of all, because graphically it cannot be easily read. So it needs to be transcoded. The information in the XML uh, needs to be transcoded in a normal graphic format. And then the, we will also have to consider the acceptance or rejection phase. Today we normally call up the supplier and we simply say to the supplier, the invoice is wrong, please reissue, correct it, amend it, rectify it. So things have changed. Now I'd like to remind you that the invoice that is issued uh, by the client goes through the steam. So the contents of that invoice is already in the hands of the inland revenues. So you cannot directly talk to your supplier and say, please edit this, change this, or change the amount, or change the description, because the invoice has already been issued. Unless the ad addressee rejects the invoice. So if I receive an invoice and I realize it is wrong and I want it to be rectified, I will have to reject it the system returns information uh, to the client, will reissue, will correct, will rectify the invoice and resend it to the state. So basically, we can actually reject the, the embers and if I accept the embers, that means that uh, the debt that I have vis-a-vis -vis my supplier is true. Because if I accept the invoice, that means the content of that invoice is correct in terms of the amount, in terms of the description of the goods delivered or of the service performed. So that debt or credit uh, become uh, true. And so for suppliers, uh, this certainty, uh, can be used vis-a-vis uh, -vis banks because now banks will recognize that uh, there is a credit and so the banks can, will finally be able to advance money without raising any issues. So this electronic billing procedure obviously requires the implementation uh, of an IT management system. So you will have you will have to have an ERP, so a software management uh, a management software that is capable of dealing with the telematic system. So we will have to consider a number of different IT procedures. 
the inland revenues and all of the, the entire Italian fiscal system um, is becoming more uh, telematic. And also, all of the latest regulations uh, um, issued by the parliament and by the government are designed to simplify the fiscal system and to simplify procedures uh, for taxpayers. So they are basically uh, trying to reduce as much as possible uh, all of the different requirements. Uh, and last but not least, there has been a new law that has recently been implemented uh, for small companies. It's a change in the law. Uh, according to which corporate income uh, becomes equal to the income of a freelancer. So all of the different uh, assessments will be, in a way, eliminated thanks to the new regimen will no longer be needed. So the inland revenues that already possesses all of the information related to my income, related to my uh, VAT subject purchases, it's easy for the inland revenue to calculate the income and therefore uh, it's taxation. And because of that, we need to have an integrated ERP. So definitely you all have a, man a vertical management software in your shop for uh, your day-to-day -day operations in the store that helps you with the uh, receipts, with the invoices. But these ERP will have to be integrated with another system that is unnecessary to deal with the passive cycle, that is to say purchases. You need to have a reliable corporate control system because that will help you in your compliance with fiscal requirements. So for inland revenues, to find out that a client has an integrated ERP is a plus because it means that that taxpayer is very reliable and trustworthy. So that taxpayer will have fewer fiscal requirements to comply with. So basically what, what I'm suggesting you to do is to have a management software, an ERP for your store, but at the same time to also have a web platform. A web platform for electronic billing so that you can transmit electronic invoices. And also for the receipt of passive electronic invoices. In addition to that, something uh, uh, that regards the management of data is basically all of the information that today we receive on paper. That uh, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to enter all of the information uh, manually? And fortunately, with electronic billing, all of that information is already included in the invoices. We're talking about digital native uh, data because so uh, the data was born in a software environment. So for the recipients, uh, 
of electronic invoice, uh, all of that data can be extracted and processed. How can we process uh, that data? Through the implementation of control instruments. Uh, that will help uh, the businessman to understand in which direction he is going. So once he has defined his own goals, the businessman can easily verify that he's going the right way. However, uh, electronic invoices uh, do not contain all of the required information. So we need to start collecting all of the other qualitative, uh, non-quantitative information. And so, because of that, it is important for us to try to help you to collect all of that information uh, that has to be managed as best as possible in order to help you achieve uh, uh, excellent results. Okay, and with that I conclude and I'm going uh, to give the floor to my colleague. I know for sure this is not a nice topic, but this is something that we have to come to terms with as owners of our stores, as businessmen, as owners of companies. We need to explore these topics and we need to start implementing all of the activities that Stefano has just described in order to gear up for 2019. If you want to complete uh, uh, the sheet uh, we have given you, we can help you uh, to implement all of these activities in view of 2019 and in view of the Privacy Act uh, that will be implemented in July. And definitely, as you have seen, we are become uh, more IT dependent. So we need to have very updated IT systems uh, uh, that allow us to interact uh, flexibly. And an IT procedure, obviously, is uh, something that the market demands because of we all use social media, social networks, but more importantly, in our business areas, IT procedures are part of our life. So all of these IT procedures are determining uh, a huge change. So we have to stay updated. I would like to conclude here. I'd like to thank you for your participation. If you complete the form, uh, we will definitely send you some additional materials. And uh, thank you again for your participation.